Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Army veteran who established his company after suffering from tinnitus and looking for relief to all the noise he kept experiencing. That is when he became aware of binary beats. Please welcome the founder of Melody Cloud, Wayne Altman. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Wayne Altman. Very excited because we're talking about Melody Cloud, which is actually something that kind of helps individuals relax. It's good sounding, but I'm going to go ahead and let Wayne explain it. But first, Wayne, go ahead and introduce yourself. Who is Wayne Altman? Um, Hey, Gabriel, thanks for having me on your show uh, and totally have enjoyed uh, listening to some of the other ones. Um, you know, look, and in a nutshell, 55 years old, I've owned multiple businesses, um, born in California, moved to Texas when I was very young. Um, and that, I, I think that that has something to do with my entrepreneurial um, kind of uh, expression. You know, I've always liked working for myself and being someone to step out, you know, and, and um, I, it's fine working for other people. Working for other people is fine. But I always like to have that added, you know, pressure on me, you know, to perform. Um, Spent eight and a half years in the Army, um, served during Desert Storm, um, stood on top of the Berlin Wall the night that it came down. Um, That's something interesting. Yeah, it was a fantastic experience. Um, I am my husband, uh, father to three girls, best thing that ever happened to me in my entire life. Yay, girls. Girl dads. Um, and, you know, that's basically it, man. That's that's me in a nutshell. I like it. I'm I'm a girl dad myself. In fact, me and Wayne were talking. He said he's from Texas. I literally flew in from Texas last night about one in the morning. So literally probably about 12 hours ago. <laughs> and, I was telling, and Wayne's like, Texas, tell me more. I'm from Texas. But yeah. let's let's talk about melody cloud I re- i'm very interested in melody clouds i would very go ahead and give it what is it how did you kind of come up with the concept and and what do you plan to do with it so what it is um june 1st i bought the domain melody clouds and as we sit right now i was just on the phone with apple we're about to release our app um on the google play store and on the apple uh, play uh, um the apple store And Melody Clouds is a relaxation, binaural beat, and solfeggio app. And we can get into that a little bit more. But um, the reason that I developed this app is I suffer from a condition known as tinnitus or tinnitus. It's a screeching. In my case, it's a screeching in my ear that just does not go away. I go to sleep with it at night. I go through right now as we're having this conversation. I have this screeching going on in my head. In the last 30 years, um, since I noticed this, the only time that I do not hear that and only hear silence is when I am using binaural beats or a solfeggio frequency um, to give me some relief. But that's not all that Melody Clouds does. We can talk more about that if you'd like. Yeah, well, actually, let's let's get into what are the, you mentioned these beats. Give Explain mm-hmm. what those beats are. Yeah, so, okay, a binaural beat is two separate frequency, one going in one ear, one going in the other ear. Your brain miraculously meets in the middle of those two frequencies and gives you effects, whether it's to um, block grief, whether it's to um, relieve pain or stress. It's used in the treatment of PTSD, for example. A lot of PTSD uh, sufferers are getting relief because you can introduce two frequencies, create your own frequency, and then if someone wants to sleep or improve their focus, um, you can manipulate uh, those brainwaves that way. Interesting. So why... 
obviously you're you're you suffer from tinnitus, right? And so you're, this is like, hey, this is something that's important for me to create. But how are you creating it? Well, it, it's a very interesting question. So I have composers all over the world, Israel, Pakistan, um, here in the United States. I'm we're here in the United States. And it's something that you can add to music or to na- nature sounds. So you don't really even know you're getting it. And you can, uh, uh, it it operates at different megahertz. Our brain waves are electrical. And so those frequencies, our brains operate at certain frequencies. They've been able to narrow down what frequency is anger, what frequency is, okay, uh, happy, sad. And if you can move the, our tagline is take charge of your mood. So that's basically what we're doing, whether it's solfeggio frequencies, which are one frequency, or the binaural beats, which are two two separate frequencies. Interesting. So now how, because in fact, I want, we were talking right before we came on the show, uh, a great example of some of the difficulties of starting a new business. Tell them exactly what you just told me. What, (laughs) What are you dealing with right now? So, so. I hired a company um, to develop an app uh, for me. Um, and so, and I, I set up an Apple developer account, a uh, Google play account. Um, I got a guns number from Dun and Bradstreet. Um, Apple requires, uh, you know, a, a bank account for monies to go in all of these things and the LLC, I, you know, I had to create an LLC, right? So I wake up this morning and I find out that Apple has, um, canceled my developer account and i'm i was shocked i was like wait, 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 wait. why would you re- why would you revoke my certificate so i was just the reason i was a minute late in coming in here is because i was on the phone with apple and they were explaining to me hey listen we don't have the we have an account for you but we don't have any files for your app no files now the you know, the, the right after I get off this with you, I made a commitment right after I get off with you, <laughs> I'm going to be contacting my developer and going, hey, what's up, fellas? Remember me? Yeah. Why do I not have these files? I think I know the answer to this. We're moving from a developer account into my account. So I think that that's going to be the answer that I hear and everything is going to be fine. But sometimes that's, you know, that's not the answer you receive and it's not fine. Yeah. (laughs) And I think, I think that's important because there's so many different nuances before the business actually takes off that that the entrepreneur has to go through, uh, you know, in order to be successful. Right. This is what I tell all. And look, by the way, congratulations. And thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Because entrepreneurship, when this country, when the United States of America was founded, it was 90% entrepreneurs, 10% people worked for other people. And that's a fact. You can look that up. In 1986, the year I graduated from high school, that number Famously, everyone was talking about it. That number had flipped and 90% of people went to work for someone else. Only 10% started their own business. Wow. Now you wonder why there's a wealth disparity. You wonder why there's a prosperity disparity. That's where you should look first. Those that make the risk, take the risk, get the reward. And so what you're doing to educate people and to encourage people to step out and and use the gifts that their creator gave them, I think that's to be applauded. And I certainly am a big fan of yours. Wayne, I, I, man, I appreciate that. I'm really touched because that really the concept of this podcast is really to try to support not only, not only highlight our current entrepreneurs, but try to engage those that are interested in becoming an entrepreneur. Really think of it as a, as a career passion uh, because you're right. America was built on small businesses, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and in order for us to get back to where we were at, we have to get back to being an entrepreneurial well, spirit. And, and thanks to people like you oh, thank and you. the efforts that you are doing and others that are doing, we are finding out we are getting back to where we were uh shopify you know it makes things that make 
going into business for yourself so much easier and the lessons and the satisfaction that you get going to work. Maybe you work a full day for someone else. That's fine. Yeah. But the fact is you come home and you own an Etsy shop or you own a Shopify store. Um, that really says, that tells me everything I need to know about you. We may disagree on every other thing politically, but at least I know, right? Yeah. I know one thing about you, yeah. and that is you. we are kindred spirits when it comes to re- self-reliance and relying on the opportunities that we get to enjoy here. Hard fought. Yeah. You know, and, and it's it's true because one of the things I, I sent you an email about the questions, I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm a little late on sending these questions over before the podcast, but I was working on my nine to five and the podcast is my five to nine. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Now, how, how you're going through this process, is this your first business? Oh no, God, no. Look, I've owned mortgage companies. I've written six books. I knew from a very young age, this is the question that really struck me. And I, I laughed. Because when I read it, it was like, oh, you know, Gabriel, you don't, you know, I mean, this is not my first rodeo, my friend. Drop some I have been on doing this here. my entire life. I like it. You know, and um, you, there are certain things, there are certain tricks that you pick up. There are certain things that you learn. Look, I've had spectacular failures. I could go on for hours about these spectacular crashes and burns that I've had. My first two books, my first book, I spent $10,000 on publishing it, publishing it myself. Couldn't get a publisher, said, you know what? Screw this. I'm publishing it. 10 grand. I made $0 on that book. Nothing. Ouch. My second book, I spent $8,000 publishing that book. I learned $2,000 worth of lesson because that book, Bupkis, zero, zero dollars. But the third book, When Bad Credit Happens to Good People, still on Amazon, people still downloading it to their Kindles. I've made a fortune on that book. Fant- I mean, to me, uh, uh, it performed very, very well. Um, and it's allowed me to do other projects. So, you know, there you, you go. You know, that's a good point. How important were those failures to your success? Well, they're incredibly important. I mean, those, those are the things that you, and this is no, this is not my cat. My, my cat is trying to look outside, but (laughs) this is not, this is not something that look, you step up to the plate. Okay. You are not going to connect on a home run every single time. There's been no major league baseball player to ever do that. There has been no receiver in the NFL to catch every ball thrown to him. It's never happened. Why in the world would you expect to be different than that? These are the best of the best, best of the world. So what you need to do is just remove one word from your vocabulary and you will be wildly successful. I no longer hear the word. I don't hear it anymore. No one says that to me that I can hear it. Other people hear no. I have never heard in my life and that's really i've heard not now i've heard come back later i've heard keep trying that i hear loud and clear not ready you see the cat the cat wants to get in on this man (laughs) very sorry he he is an entrepreneur as well okay (laughs) but what would you say, you know, you've, since you have these years of experience, what would you say has some of the been, what are those hardest lessons that you have learned? You know, you mentioned two of them, right? Losing 10,000 and losing 8,000. Were those your hardest lessons or was there something, was there even more spectacular failure as well, you call it? With the, with the first book um, was um, mortgage, no credit, credit 101. And I wrote that book because I owned a mortgage company and that mortgage company employed loan officers and those loan officers couldn't read a credit report. So credit 101 was a technical manual on how to read a credit report. It was never going to be appealing to a mass market of people. Right. Right. And then I compounded that mistake now, now look, it, it helped the loan officers. I suppose I made money because it helped those loan officers stop bringing me 
people that couldn't buy steam off a hot dog to, <laughs> to buy a house. Okay. So in that way, we made money from it. All right. Makes sense. Then mortgage 101, I had people bringing me and trying to put people from various walks of life into the same exact type of mortgage. And I had a fit. I, it, look, this person does not belong in this mortgage. Stop trying to shoehorn them into a, a, a an instrument that they don't have any, has no relevance. Why are you selling an 80-year-old couple a 30-year mortgage? They're not going to be here. Fair enough. You should be talking to them about a reverse mortgage and using the equity instead of borrowing money. Use the equity in there anyway. No. So I not the the population was the market was not was a very very tiny market right yep so those lessons know your market google analytics right now i'm telling anybody listening to this google analytics your very best tool yeah your very yeah. best friend of it, all the tools you've got including money better than money is google analytics I and I don't work for Google. I agree. I don't work for Google. That's one of the things I've been starting to get into. In fact, one of my former guests, uh, Shakur Dreamy, they're the ones that kind of like inspired me to start looking at Google Analytics. And it's, oh, yeah. it's quite remarkable. Uh, just for folks to know, it's 60-40. 60 percent of the individuals that are listening, they're women. We got a lot of women entrepreneurs out there that are ready to come out there and kick some butt. So I'm really excited about that. Now, Wayne, what would you say, you know, you've, you've learned that. I think that was a great lesson. You know, one, know your target. You know, you, your first book, you're very narrow, right? It, was, it wasn't appealing to the mass markets. Where were you? Where were you? When I was here? And I did real estate, you know, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, that actually would probably be not, I don't need this as a realtor, right? In fact, I, right. I'm going to give it to my mortgage broker and have the lenders work with it, but yeah, it's yep. in the get a, give it to an underwriter or something, have them deal with it. But yeah, it's it's, it's interesting because I I see the value, but I also see the limitation of the value, right? Of, of them. Well, here's I don't mean to interrupt you, but yep. here's the here's the the takeaway. I was I wasn't completely off the mark with that book. I wrote when bad credit happens to good people from Credit One Hundred and One. So I wrote a book for consumers who. It's illegal to offer consumers in the United States and lessons um, or education on credit. It's illegal. It's part of the 1972 Fair Credit Act. Noted. We cannot have classes in college or in high school that would teach our children about credit. Okay. Really? Yes. Look it up. Look uh, it up. What? I'm gonna have, yes, I'm man. The I'm reason so much there's a that. reason we gave up when we when we got bankruptcy laws. Bankruptcy laws are very favorable to the average person, right? Right. And when, in in exchange for those bankruptcy laws being favorable to us, we basically sold our soul. We both basically said, okay, we won't have now it we'll leave it to the parents. We'll leave it to the parents to teach their kids about credit and about, you know, these money issues, right? Right. So what happened? Well, you send your son, you send your daughter to college. The first day they're on campus, they have Discover, Visa, MasterCard, everybody throwing them T-shirts, handing them a slice of pizza, and your kid signs up for every one of those credit cards. Forget for a moment that they're already in debt from the education that they haven't even received yet. They're about to get the best education of their entire life because when Discover and Visa and, and MasterCard come calling, you know, they, I mean, they have people that are called skip tracers for a reason, okay? So if you're not teaching your child about credit and money when they are very, very young, you've already failed them as a parent, period. Yeah. That is that is phenomenal knowledge because I think myself not to not to say anything um, malintent to my parents, but I certainly felt coming into college I didn't have a good grasp on the debit and credit credit. Take card it easy on your that. parents because they yeah, didn't totally. have it either. <laughs> True. Where I are agree. they going to get the I information? Agree. Yeah, yeah. So they can't give you something that they don't already have. Now yep. I will tell you this: my girls got a sex education from their father and a credit education from their father from his 
point of view. You know what I mean? Right. I wanted yeah. to make sure that they got that information correct. It was something that I wouldn't even trust. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say trust my wife with, but it wasn't something that I, we sat down with them together. Right. These are tools I need you to know yeah. and go forth and prosper. Yeah, it makes sense. Hey, I got a I got a two year old girl at home, so it makes sense, you know, wanting to ensure that they have uh, the the end of the goal. Uh, the end of the day is is we're just trying to ensure that we can provide them success that we didn't have. I always say, you know, financially, I want to be able to say no and not have to say no. And what right. I mean by that, I just want to be financially secure where I have the opportunity. If my kid asks me for something, I can say no, not right now because you know what, you haven't worked for that yet. And I'm going to teach you the value of what hours of work mean and how you actually create a revenue to purchase an item, right? Well, most people I know that are parents want to give their kids things that they never had, uh, you know, and, and their parents were, we want to do better, but right. incrementally, we want to do better than what we had growing up, okay? Correct. I, I'm going to tell you something, this is a very true story. So my middle daughter came home and said, I got a job at Chipotle. Now, this is a straight-A student. She has uh, uh, gotten a volleyball full-ride scholarship to college. So she her college is taken care of full-ride. She worked very hard for that. She's never brought home a B in her life. And I said to her, eh, ex nay, no, your, your, your job right now is, um, get, you know, your grades and your volleyball, okay? Now, she works at Chipotle <laughs> because she <laughs> said to me, hey, look, I would like to know what hard work. I want to know you guys give us everything. I want to know, mm. you know, I want a job. I want to work for the money. Mm. I want to work for spending money. And it slapped me across the face yeah. because I would dare come on Gabriel's program and talk to people about entrepreneurship and about hard work. Yet. I'm trying to raise a little weasel that I'm paying everything for. She wouldn't have it. She would not have it. That's the so, testament to how you raise your daughters. right? I think so. I think so. And, it, and that makes me as proud of Reagan as when I was, when she came home and said, Hey, look, I've taken care of my own college, you know, yeah. and she has two sisters, both of whom are, you're doing exactly the same thing. My oldest daughter, Cassidy, she's worked for all through high school. So, you, you know, you, you, you instill a good work ethic in people, you yep. know, in the, in your children, and that's going to shine through. I that agree. is, yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's the right thing to do. So now what would you say? You've, you have all these experiences, you working with your daughters, building them up. What would you say has been easy about being an entrepreneur? Waking up and get, being excited and having a sense of purpose and having a sense of fulfillment when things do go right, right? Moments like this where I can, you know, sit back and go, all right, look, these questions, I have an answer to that question, you know? I mean, if someone were to ask me and I didn't have an answer for it, that would be a very tough thing to, to go through life with. I will go down no, swinging. I will know that I tried everything I possibly could for this project to be a success. Melody Clouds, for example. Listen, I am charging $2.99 for Melody Clouds for the first two months. Okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because I want people to feel stupid for not taking me up on it. Right? After the two months, it's $5.99. Now, there are apps on the market right now that are charging $25 and $30 and do not do half what Melody Clouds does. I said it, and I mean it. Check it out. You don't believe me? Check it out. There are 17,000 audiobooks if you don't like reading. There are 30,000 books that if you do like reading. There are there are things about Melody Clouds. I just put 40 Aesop's fables. That's another thing too, right? That we, we need to be teaching our kids. My point is, my point is, I the largest button on my app is the unsubscribe button. That's the biggest button. It's right in the middle and it is very large. You can't miss it because I'm not trying to take anyone's money that doesn't want to freely hand it to me. This is a business. This isn't a ripoff. 
So if you don't, if, if something about that does not appeal to you, thank you for listening yeah. <laughs> and move along, yeah. please move along. Yeah. And that's, that's right. Right. You know, your target audience and that's, you're going to focus on now. Have you ever felt a moment, maybe not with melody clouds, cause we're just starting to, or maybe with it, but as being an entrepreneur, have you ever had a moment of like self doubt where oh, this is like, this might not be it. Freaking all the time, even with melody clouds. Even with Melody Clouds, because because we are surrounded. That's why I told you don't listen to no. Don't hear that word. Because you are surrounded by people who do not want you to succeed. And I don't care what they say. These are family members. These are friends of yours. And if you succeed, it makes them somehow feel lesser. So you need to understand that. Now, there are two options for you at this point. You can either allow the crab to pull you back in the bucket, because that's what these people are, or you can say, you know what, you, I'm going to succeed anyway, and then I'm going to help you and bring you along, and you'll see that it was no threat to you. You're going to love me successful. Very true. You know, I, I, I say this often. I'm sure people are probably thinking they're hearing a broken record, but when you're climbing up that corporate ladder or any type of ladder, don't be stepping on people. Reach down and help the people that are helping you. 100%. Partnerships. Yep. That should be always going through your brain. How can I partner with this person, with that person? That should be the first. Maybe you can't. Maybe there is no way. Maybe your views on things are too far apart. May Listen, I get it. But you need to be thinking to yourself, how do I edify his business and what he's doing or she is doing? And at the same time, offering a platform or some support to them selflessly. You don't necessarily have to expect anything in return. But yeah, it's a cat. Damn cat. cat. Every time. <laughs> so how do you, how, wait, how do you build, like how do you market and brand an app? This, this is exactly how you go and you talk to people, you go and you, I refuse no one. If you want to talk to me about what I'm doing, I get the loudest mouth. Okay. <laughs> I, I have no problem in talking to you about what I'm doing because I believe in what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I know how it's affected me and how it's helped me. I, I know the benefit to people. I've watched it. I've, I get all kinds of communication from people, right? Yep. So that part is absolutely, you know, no problem. Um, and, you know, that's, that's really what I would tell you. And what, where do you see Melody Clouds in the next, you know, five years? And that's the beauty. That's the beauty because I'm standing on top of a mountain right now. And I know the math. If there's one thing I finally learned all through school is now I know the math, right? At 100,000 subscribers. Only charging six dollars, that's six hundred thousand dollars a month. That's plenty, by the way. Okay, so everybody out there, let's get a hundred thousand people. Send me six <laughs> bucks. That I am done. Okay, you'll never have to see me again. Never, that is, but I want to give you something of maximum value for that. Okay, I'm telling you right now, I would not take a donation of six bucks, but I've got three hundred thousand files on Melody Cloud, sir. There are 300,000 files, whether they are guided meditations, whether they are hypnotherapy to help you stop smoking or stop putting food in your mouth, whatever it is, I'm trying to be of some benefit. And by the way, most of the people I'm talking to have already spent, they're already spending 18 to $30 a month on an app that has a lot less content than what I'm offering. Now, what would you say is like an entrepreneur, maybe with Melody Clouds in particular, what keeps you up at night? Is there anything that keeps you up at night? My kids, man. I mean, making sure <laughs> that they're, that well, I mean, I mean, that in a, I mean that in a good way. I mean, they look, they've never done anything wrong in their entire life. And I wonder sometimes if they're mine, because I did a whole <laughs> lot of bad stuff when I was in my, in my youth. And I don't mean like illegal stuff. I just mean really dumb stuff. Yep. And I keep waiting for that. Um, you know, my, my wife's happiness, you know what I mean? I live for her. I, I, everything I do is with really one person in mind. And I'm not talking about the mayor. I am talking about the person I partnered with throughout my life. 
And I would be nowhere and ha would have d accomplished nothing without my wife, Tracy, period. And anyone curious, go on Melody Clouds. Her picture is on That's there it is. Uh, of us together, right? Yep. I, she is my partner through life and 100%. Uh, biggest supporter, biggest cheerleader. She has toiled every bit as hard. That's a, that's another thing too. If you're trying to do this entrepreneur thing by yourself, bad move, bad move. Whether it's a wife, uh, uh, you have a partner, you know, you really need to be shoulder to shoulder with someone. In my opinion, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, in fact, I was at a conference that I was mentioning, you know, I got home super late from Texas. And, and one of the things I mentioned during this conference was the only regret. I don't have many regrets in life, but one of my only regrets is not meeting my wife sooner. Oh, that's, yeah. That's one of my only regrets. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm being truthful. And so, wife, if you're hearing, I love you, but that's being honest. I, I truly am. Now, give the listeners at home some advice, some inspiring entrepreneurs, hopefully they're listening. This is an education show. You have a lot of experience. I'm in, I'm I'm engaged. I mean, I'm stoked about this episode, but give him some advice. What's some advice? Cat, that? not, not the cat, not, you know, notwithstanding <laughs> the cat, the cat. That refuses. <laughs> yeah. I, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Um, look, you, you do something. If not this, something else, F find something that you are interested in. You don't have to love what you're doing. Okay. It, I, I hated that advice because I was always, Eh, you know, I, it wasn't something that I, but find something you can pour your heart and soul into, right? That it's not a drudgery. Gabriel, let me tell you something. I don't have a day off. I don't have time off. Do I go watch my kids play volleyball? I absolutely do. Do I take my wife and family on vacation? 100% I do. Do I go play golf with friends? You're damn right I do. However, if there is something that needs to be done, this is what I am. This is what I do. So if it's whether it's negotiating music for some poetry that I'd like to see on Melody Clouds or whether it's um, a, a partnership that I'm trying to form with a, a, a particular group to expand my membership, then that takes precedent, whether it's 10 o'clock at night whether it's four o'clock in the morning, I was on a podcast at 425 in the morning for an Australian podcast. Look, man, I, look at me. I need beauty sleep. I need, <laughs> I need all the beauty sleep I can get brother, but I'm going, you make those. And I did it gladly. And I was just like this. I, they were like, do you ever sleep? And I'm like, when I'm dead, when I'm dead, yeah. I'll be able to sleep. I agree. And you know, that's a great point about I, I do agree. Some some folks are going to find something that they love to do, and and, and more power to They're them. Lucky, lucky, lucky. They very are. But one of my former guests um, talked about their zone of genius, and I recently just finished this book about the zone of genius and talking about I am the master of my own time. I make time. Right. We always say we're too busy for that. Uh, if, if if your kid, for example, if you're working and your kid comes, hey, Dad, I want to play catch. I'm too busy. Yeah. But if you're if your kid, if you're working, your kid came with a nail in your finger and said, Dad, I need help. You're going to make time. Right. 100%. So, so we are the master of our own time. And I think that that has resonated with me a lot, realizing, you know, I, I need to find my zone of genius. What makes me happy? What do I like to do? It might be by something I love doing in, in the love world. It, and it might. Who knows? But whatever I find is my zone of genius is going to make me that much better as an entrepreneur, that much better as a person. And then and focusing on my time, being aware of my own, that I am the master of my own time. You know, yeah. these are things, you know, to your point, I never take a day off, but you're damn right. I'm going to go golfing with the boys, you know, shout yeah. out, shout well, out to, you the know, text just to that point. If I did what I love to do. Yep. Okay. That would be golf. I yeah, love totally. playing golf, <laughs> you see but I'm back, a horrible golf golfer. <laughs> I am the worst <laughs> golfer on the planet. I have hacked up golf courses across oh, yeah. this country. Yep. There are pictures of me at Whistling Straits and at Torrey Pines. Don't ever let him back here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, the, 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 for me, that would not work out. I would starve to death. Yeah. So what I what did I do? I found things that I absolutely had a, a, a interest in 
that, um, especially with Melody Clouds, it gave me, these binaural beats gave me back something. I did not realize that I, I didn't even realize that I could get back. I knew that something was wrong. I knew that I've lost a lot of my hearing. I'm exhausted at the end of the day because I can't hear me speak. Everyone else hears way too much of me speak, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, but when I when I got clear and and was able to um, have that moments those moments of silence, uh, I got very emotional. I still do. I get very yeah. emotional about that. Yeah, I, I can see. I can totally see how that can be yeah. something. Now, for the folks listening at home, where can they find more information about Melody Clouds? Maybe they're interested in hearing more. I know the app is not out yet, but hopefully by the time this episode airs, the app will in fact be out. But where can they find more information, social media, website? Well, from your lips to God's ears as far as the app coming out, man. I mean, it, it, you know, there's always problems, but yeah. I will tell you this. Once it comes out, it is the most stunningly beautiful app I personally have ever seen. And I, I get it. All right. But if you want to get in touch with me, it's Wayne Altman at Melody Clouds. Best way of getting in touch with me. Um, MelodyClouds.com is the, um, is the uh, web website. And you can listen to all of these things straight through the website. It, it affects nothing, really. Um, as long as you have an internet uh, access, um, you're, you know, you're able to hear every single one of these um, uh, music tracks or, or audio books. Uh, lullabies for babies. We, we crafted lullabies that last for 20 hours. And the reason that we did that uh, just very quickly, the reason we did that is because young babies, the first skill we all learn is self soothing. Mm -hmm. That's the first skill we can learn. And so with a expanded lullaby, they'll wake up, they'll hear, they'll smell they're in the same place. They'll, see their environment has not changed and they go right back to sleep 30 to 60% quicker. So, you know, people wanting to get in touch with me, I'm not that hard to find, you know, melodyclouds.com, uh, Wayne Altman at Melody Clouds. And I would be very glad to get in touch with them that they got in touch with me. Perfect. I love it. In fact, folks listening, this is a great reason why you should subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter because this information will be on the newsletter the week before the episode airs the week the episode airs and the week after in addition to that we'll also have the transcription of this podcast episode on the website we'll have links back to wayne's and melody cloud so we will make sure that we get some of that seo love on the website for you as well wayne but wayne thank, thank you, you so much for coming on the show i i'm jazz you got me all amped up you're I'm talking about kindred spirits, baby. We both hacked yeah. it up on the golf course. Sweet. Well, I just talked to Pumpkin. Pumpkin is very sorry that he interrupted us uh, several times. Yeah, he's definitely apologetic. Oh, I, we're going to have to have a talk. But look, Gabriel, seriously, what you're doing, I, I mean it sincerely, okay? What you are doing, not many people, A, have the interest in doing, and it is so important, and B, None of them do it the way that you do it. You are very, very good at what you do. I really so appreciate keep going. That. I appreciate that. I, I very yeah. much appreciate that because there's certainly times down the basement alone, you know, editing podcasts and the wife's like, call hey, me. Going I'll on? give you my number. You call me. You need that, baby. I'm there for I you. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, again, please follow me at theshadesofe.com. Uh, you can also follow us on the social sites at the Shades of E. Go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter on that website as well. Wayne, thank you so very much for being on the show. I'm really excited. Again, this information is going to be on the newsletter. So, folks, please subscribe. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.